We also have Mayuresh Joshi, fund manager at Angel Broking, joining us. Now, Mayuresh, great to have you on the show. I'm going to come to you straight up on those ITC numbers. We all know that the cigarette volumes have been under tremendous pressure. Now, uh, the numbers only iterate that. What's your call on the stock? Afternoon, Mini. Clearly, I think uh, disappointment was expected to come through, and it has. Uh, so, in terms of the volume degrowth, if you're talking about habit margins compressing, uh, not just for the cigarette business, you're also talking about compression happening on the IV and the paper bonds business, largely built into my estimates. But clearly, I think it's looking up uh, in terms of how forward valuation the stock might uh, derive. Uh, clearly, I think the other FMCG business is something that the company is intently focused upon. And for the next few years, I think uh, increase in the top line on that business is a key parameter for the company. Having said that, I think uh, with the kind of excise hikes, the VAT hikes that we are probably seeing across states, we will still have a dent in terms of how the top line grows. And though ITC will be successful in increasing the prices to mitigate and offset the kind of volume degrowth that we've seen, it's going to be a clear struggle in terms of getting their earnings up, at least for the next couple of years. So clearly, I think the stock from a valuation perspective is looking attractively as compared to the entire FMCG basket. But our take is that in terms of a risk reward, uh, even from the current levels, the stock might correct 5-6% uh, to say the least. Uh, and in terms of uh, how the stock performance might be, it might just underperform the markets uh, and the FMCG basket as well, at least for the next three to four quarters. Fair enough, Mayuresh. Uh, let's uh, quickly get you the review of a uh, preview of the two numbers also likely. Uh, first up, uh, Priyank uh, joins us with what is expected on uh, Larson and Tubro. Uh, Priyank, uh, uh, you know, capital goods has been a very big focus area. We've got uh, good order inflows from Larson and Tubro. What's really expected in terms of the numbers? For LNT, what we're basically focusing on out here is a whole host of uh, commentary as far as some of the divisions are concerned and what kind of print we actually pick up in regard to margin. So let me quickly run you through as to what we're working with. For, on the top line, the bottom line, you're expected to see growth of around 11, uh, 10 to 11 percent is what we're working with. On the operation front itself, it's going to be pretty muted as far as margins are concerned this time around. So watch out if there is any kind of a surprise either on the upside or the downside as far as the margin picture is concerned. Beyond that, uh, remember the order wins have been somewhat muted uh, plus the fact that the the overseas order wins more specifically in regard to the way oil price has been panning out and the kind of its uh, the kind of impact it's been having on the Middle East book as well will probably play out this quarter once again. Apart from that, working capital requirement have been pretty stretched. You've got a, 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 a pretty stressful situation coming in when we talk about the working capital requirement as far as LNT is concerned and, and for the whole sector. Watch out if there is any kind of improvement in that front. Hydrocarbons division, which has been the focus for the last couple of quarters, will continue to be focused this time around. You want to watch out for some of the newer divisions like railways, uh, defense, real estate, which has been picking up over the last couple of quarters. Performance of that also will be pretty important to watch out for as far as LNT is concerned. Uh, defense commentary obviously will be in focus what kind of update uh, we've picked up in that regard because you know, that, that was one of the core areas that the management also had highlighted with the government focus in that space. Now beyond that Keep an eye out for commentary in terms of value unlocking, divestments. You've already seen recently, they've already taken place, uh, so some of the divestments. Non-core assets have already been divested. They've got good amount of money for that as well. So keep an eye out on the commentary if they, they plan to hit the market uh, soon as well with a couple of their uh, divisions and, and if there's any kind of an update regarding the divestments out there. And more importantly, guidance once again will be the focus area. Remember, they've been working at 15% on the revenue and the order info for FI16. Let's see as to if they go ahead and maintain that or they, they, they're going to make any kind of change to it. Right. Thanks so much for that. And you can catch the LNT management right here on the show at 1.45 this afternoon. We will be joined by N. Subramaniam, uh, S. N. Subramaniam and R. Shankar Raman, uh, 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 the CFO of Larson and Tubro. Mayuresh, you know, the, the story in Larson and Tubro has been one of all the order wins. Um, that's really, uh, you know, also uh, order wins that will accrue over a period of time. It's not as though it's going to come on the balance sheet right now. This is going to be, uh, you know, the legacy issue of, of the that slowdown period. So, A, what are you expecting? And B, the other big theme is going to be value unlocking. Uh, we do understand that the IPO uh, of l and Infotech could be looked at and, and talked about. Uh, you know, how would you approach this stock right now? So clearly, I mean, in terms of order flows, uh, for the first quarter, you've seen order flows of 26,500 odd crores. We're expecting consolidated order flows, which includes the ENC part and the overseas order wins, 
to be to the tune of 30 to 30 to thousand odd crores. So if you sum that up, I think it's close to 58,500 odd crores in terms of the first half, in terms of order wins. Now if you go by the guidance of 15% on the base of F515, you're probably looking at order wins to the tune of 1.78 trillion rupees, which effectively means that LNT needs to cough up orders at least of a trillion and uh, 10 lakhs. So in that sense itself, I think substantial order wins uh, should be reported by the company in Q3, Q4. What happens uh, particularly as Priyank was mentioning on the hydrocarbons part is going to be key in the quarter gone by we've seen some improvement on the EBIT front for the hydrocarbons division but with the sharp fall in crude prices that we've seen some amount of issues related to a few contracts in the Middle East you are actually looking at some one-offs or liquidity damages to come through on that division as well. Heavy engineering again I think you're seeing some order flow coming through specifically on the ENC part but clearly I think uh, the focus of LNT has been more domestic uh, with the fall in crude prices the slowdown in national orders has been quite immense. Having said that I think in terms of divestments of its non-core assets I think LNT Infotech has done exceedingly well. You're talking about LNT reality and some of the parts moving there as well. So clearly I think divestment and management commentary thereof is going to be key in terms of how value I'm talking the stock can probably be looked at. But clearly from an operational performance LNT's fortunes hinge on how the capex recovery cycle recovers. We don't see that happening at least for a quarter or two. So clearly the story is uh, how soon the capex cycle revives and if it does I think LNT is the biggest beneficiary. But again I think soft the numbers expected we're expecting a bit of margin of 10.3 percent which is on the lower side. Uh, okay. Than what okay I'm going to speed things up uh, Mayuresh because I've got lots of questions for you and lots of stocks to watch out for and cover but a very quick um, uh, alert on ICICI Bank as well. The numbers are expected out. Remember after Axis Bank the focus is going to be on the NPA end of the of the bank. We've got Pranoy with a quick heads up on what is expected. Pranoy. Uh, well, yes, asset quality concerns are there. For starters, if you talk about the headline numbers, uh, muted uh, core income growth, uh, also led by higher uh, loan loss provisions, is expected to uh, drive the profits higher by only a 10% quantum expe mu uh, absolute expectation at around 29.93 crores. If you talk about the NII as well, seen higher by 11 odd percent, 11 and a half percent at absolute levels of 5.193 crores. Uh, the net interest margin is expected to remain stable, marginally incrementing to around 3.5% is what the expectation is, versus 3.4% on a year on year basis and in the previous quarter it was 3.54 percent so obviously that will be the all important number to watch out for as well uh, among factors uh, you would be looking at the other income which is expected to get support from dividend from subsidiaries uh, muted fee income growth of around nine percent is what the expectation is on the fee income front and uh, provisions are likely to remain high on back of uh, elevated slippages as well uh, while the loan growth is expected to remain moderate at around 15 percent you've seen uh, good loan growth as far as uh, an, an access bank is concerned as also a yes bank that reported numbers yesterday, so the loan growth, the advances growth number would be crucial to watch out for uh, one of the biggest private banks uh, being ICICI. Uh, and also, uh, if you talk about uh, the asset quality front, uh, it is expected uh, to stay elevated on account of backlog uh, of restructured assets. Uh, so obviously, it's an important number, commands a heavy weightage on the bank nifty as well. So it would be important to track all these factors. Yes, it will be important to track all these factors. Meanwhile, the management, Chanda Kocha, will be also addressing the media at 2.30 this afternoon. Uh, Kotak Mahindra Bank came out with numbers. Uh, provisioning is down over there, but it's not a strictly comparable business year on year because of the ING uh, Vijat um, merger. Of course, uh, sequentially there has been a growth, and that's why the stock is up. But uh, let's uh, go beyond the heavyweights, uh, Mayuresh, and I'm going to ask you about uh, your take on uh, a clutch of stocks like Just Dial and Eros. Uh, and Dishman Pharma, if I can throw it in, uh, because Eros and Justal are very, very weak today, uh, continuing to be weak, while um, Dishman has seen quite a big spurt. So clearly, as a disclaimer, we don't cover Eros, but with the kind of uh, developments that are probably happening on this international arm, um, it, it's uh, not a very healthy sign. So clearly, I think uh, staying away from Eros at this point of time. Just that, again, weak set of numbers put in. And if you look at the valuation expectations that a lot of analysts have on the street or were having on the street, I think they're quite getting normalized right now. So I think in terms of the new engines coming through, the new initiatives coming through, you need to give time uh, for the company to start reporting better numbers and effective improvement in cash flow. So I think I'd still wait for declines on just that, even from the current level. This one, I think we were having a convictional strong buy at lower levels. 
the stock has actually doubled from the current levels that we were suggesting. In fact, it's come three times. So clearly, I think in terms of valuations, looking expensive at this point of time, but the management strategy is on track. Uh, the capex is much lower. The vitamin D business is expected to do well. The asset turnover ratios are expected to outperform uh, a lot of the mid-cap pharma players. And clearly, I think in terms of revenues as well, both from cramps and vitamin D, I think you should see sequential improvement happening. So clearly, if investors holding onto the stock at lower levels should continue holding on to this fund. Okay, I understand we are just counting down to ICICI bank uh, numbers. Uh, 3030 is the Q2 net uh, which has come in. Um, so it is uh, above ex estimates. We were estimating it to be at 2,993 crores. It has come above that uh, and uh, great that we still have Mayuresh with us. Uh, the net profit has come at about uh, uh, 3,000 uh, uh, and uh, 30 odd crores. Uh, the NPA has gone up marginally, up 3.77% versus 3.68%. So it's a really a marginal uh, increase out there. Uh, interest income, net interest income has come in uh, as well. Uh, so that, that's 30, 30 crores on the net profit number as far as ICICI is concerned. Gross NPA, as I said, at 3.77%. Uh, and of course, uh, the stock is climbing up on the back of that news, up 2% in trade today. So after Kotak, this is the second uh, uh, set of numbers that we've got this morning from the banking sector, and it is not looking bad at all. So uh, Mayuresh, even as we see this, uh, Marginal increase in gross NPA uh, and uh, increase in profitability. Provisions have come in at 942 crores. I don't have a comparable figure for that. Uh, yes, versus 850 crores uh, in the last uh, uh, comparable p period. So 942 crores of provisions, uh, Mayuresh, how would you view this? So I think uh, we've been penciling in somewhere around 1,085 odd crores in terms of provisioning coming through. So I think definitely a lower figure on that count. The stress assets were expected to be a little bit on the higher side, which has come through, more or less with the stress to be seen in the power and the metals and the infra space for ICICI. So our take on stress assets was anywhere between 2,500 to 3,000 odd crores. Bottom line, bang in line with estimates. So we're estimating around 3,035 odd crores. It's come close to that figure, which effectively implies uh, either the NI growth that we were penciling at 14%, uh, which was larger than the street expectations, has come through, or there is some component of other income, either from the fee-based side or the treasury income, which is probably at the bottom line. Right, uh, NPA at one, net NPA at 1.65% versus 1.58%. 1 uh, let's quickly recap for you the numbers. Uh, net profit has come at uh, 3,030 crores uh, versus an estimate of about 2,993 crores. Uh, uh, so uh, there has been an uh, increase out there. The earlier period was 2,709 crores. Uh, gross NPA has come in at 9.77% versus 9.68%. Uh, and uh, a provisioning has increased to about 945 crore rupees. Uh, Samir Dalal from uh, Natwar uh, Lal and Sun Stockbrokers joins us now. Um, uh, Samir, uh, what is your take on the ICICI numbers? Um, looking at it at the early stage, the NPA seem a little higher than uh, uh, what they were uh, last quarter. So obviously some sort of asset quality deterioration seen. We saw the similar thing with Access Bank, so I'm not very surprised about it. However, uh, going forward needs to be seen also the breakup of how much of it was restructured, uh, slipping into the NPA category, how much how much upgradation. So we need to see more on the details of what happened to the NPA category. That would probably determine uh, uh, how the stock would react uh, maybe, you know, tomorrow. Okay. Uh, Dinesh, uh, what is your view on it? Dinesh Shukla from Sher Khan also joins us uh, for his take. Dinesh, what's your first take on the numbers? Uh, well, the numbers are slightly higher than uh, are estimated at the PAT level, primarily due to better than expected growth in the net interest income. Uh, though asset quality has shown little uh, increase compared to the uh, Q1 levels, but uh, that is okay. The operating performance has uh, been strong. Okay. Are you worried about the sheer scale of the NPAs? It's a big balance sheet, uh, Dinesh, but it, the, the NPA figure has increased even though yeah, percentage-wise it is marginal, but it is a sizable uh, amount that has uh, been uh, uh, put out there. Yeah, I would definitely look at the, the numbers uh, such as uh, uh, outstanding restructured loans and uh, sale of loans, if any. All those numbers uh, we'll look into detail. 
but uh, the incremental increase of about uh, six seven hundred crores on quarter quarter basis uh, in NPA doesn't look to be a very high compared to last two three quarters. Mm, so, do you think the bank you've been tracking the bank for some time have they been able to control the NPA issue and how much has gone into restructuring over the last couple of uh, months? Uh, uh, Q, compared to Q4, Q1 was better in terms of incremental slippages. Uh, Q2 numbers, uh, uh, we look at how much uh, the incremental slippages come in. Hmm. Uh, Mayuresh, uh, slippages has been a big issue. Access Bank, uh, you know, kind of highlighted it. Uh, what's your sense? Because uh, the, the general consensus seems to be that it's only going to get worse from here. So clearly, uh, many, I think the kind of exposure that a lot of these banks, including access to infrastructure, power, metals, infra and, and real estate, I think is, uh, is is quite high when it comes to the private space. So yes, I think in terms of the restructured assets uh, that a lot of banks, specifically ICICI Bank, had to undergo, I think they've done a commendable job in my opinion. So if you look at the absolute numbers that have slipped from Q1 to Q2, I think in terms of absolute numbers, I do not see that to be a problem. Again, I think from the management, I think what will be key is how much refinancing has actually happened under the 525 scheme what have been the relapses rather from the restructured book. So I think these two, three parameters will be key. But looking at uh, the numbers uh, on the face of it, I think I, I think it's a very decent set that ICICI has uh, posted this quarter. Okay, Samir, if I can come to you here, relatively speaking, the ICICI bank stock has been down about 13% over the year and 21% uh, year to date. What's your call on the stock price from here? Uh, I think all the negatives uh, to a large extent right still. Um, I think there is uh, more room on the upside than on the downside. It just needs to be seen, you know, what kind of restructuring happened in the current quarter, the 525, which was just discussed. So if those are not too bad, I get a feeling ICICI probably has some more room on the outside. The stock has most of the negative price in it. We could see the stock closer to the 300 levels maybe over the next uh, quarter, by the next quarter. Mm. Restructuring is going to be a crucial thing to watch out for. How much of the loans have been restructured? Dinesh, what's your call on the stock? And especially if you compare it with the others uh, in the space. Well, we seem to have gone in for a, uh, a call hold over there. But Mayuresh, what's your call on the stock? Uh, because relatively speaking, you know, within this uh, banking space, there are two stocks that have done fairly well a Bank of Baroda because of the Indra Dhanush and uh, Indusind Bank which has uh, climbed up. Uh, how would you rate an ICICI bank purely in terms of valuation in the road ahead? So I think uh, most of the negatives probably built into the price. So the valuation that are 1.6 price to book is uh, factoring in a lot of negatives. And as I mentioned earlier, I think the management commentary, as they said in the last quarter as well, is on the positive note related to the restructuring book and the 525 scheme as well. Our own take is that uh, the stock uh, is this poised for good growth going forward. The earnings growth should be in excess of 18 to 19 percent for the better part of the next couple of years. ROA is close to 1.6 times and ROA is of 16, 17 percent. So we're building in a target price of 345, but again, post management interaction, we'll probably be revising the numbers. But I think the target price as on date stays at 345 for ICICI. Okay, 345 is your target price for this. Let's go across to Shraddha, my colleague, who's got the fine print on the numbers and perhaps more details on the fee income and whether there have been a big restructuring of assets. Shraddha, can you take us through the fine print, please? Absolutely. If you talk, uh, look at it uh, on a broad uh, basis or the first look of it, the numbers do seem uh, to be in line with expectations. So net interest income growth of about 13% uh, at 5251 crores versus the number of 5193 that the street was working with. And this has been uh, primarily driven by the domestic loan growth. Uh, we also saw the net profit uh, growth come in at about 12%, 3030 crores versus the number of 2993 that the street was working with. So slight um, uh, beats the number by a, a slight a few crores. Uh, provisions have come in uh, at 942 crores versus 955 in the June ended quarter. So provisions are, um, uh, seem stable on a quarter on quarter basis. We were expecting uh, it to come slightly higher as there was fears of uh, possible slippages coming in from the restructured um, loans. Net interest margins also the bank has been able to um, maintain that at about 3.5 percent. So stable on a sequential basis. Other income seen a growth of about 10 percent uh, probably supported by the uh, in, uh, income from the uh, subsidiaries. 
Uh, loan growth at uh, 17 percent, uh, uh, a pretty healthy number when it comes to ICICI Bank. We are expecting a number of about uh, 15 percent to come in. So maintain that uh, that that those sort of uh, levels. Uh, we also saw 15 percent just in uh, Q1. Uh, if you look at the uh, on the asset quality side, the uh, gross in the net NP is a marginal uptick of about 10 basis points coming in there. So uh, what is really going to be important here to watch out for is definitely going to be the kind of um, restructured uh, number that we get from the management. Or we'll we'll get that in the press conference. We don't have those numbers right now. So uh, also the kind of uh, numbers, uh, uh, the 5 by 25 uh, financing, uh, the outlook on the asset quality and any relapse from the restructured assets, these are going to be the key things to watch out for from ICICI Bank. Remember, uh, we also need to watch out for the uh, sales that they have made to ARCs in uh, the June ended quarter. They sold about 500 crore worth loans to ARCs and uh, this time around we are hearing uh, the, they would, uh, that would double to close to 1000 crore. So uh, these are the key things that will actually determine the stock movement from here. Okay, fair enough, Shraddha, but what a hectic day of news we've had. Uh, in fact, uh, news just breaking uh, and a stock alert. Sun TV is up 6.5%. The company has uh, decided to, uh, it is considering a buyback of equity shares on the 5th of November. Buybacks always a good thing for the markets, uh, Mayuresh, especially when the company has gone through a very, very rough patch. So I'm going to ask you very quickly, I know you have to leave us. What's your take on Sun TV and the buyback? So yes, I think it's perceived to be a good news and again I think the pricing that uh, the management lays out is going to be key. However, I think within the space itself, uh, Z is something that I that I like. I think the earnings growth should be in excess of 25-26%. The ad revenue growth has been stupendous for Z in the quarter gone by. We are still expecting a 25-26% run rate in terms of ad revenues going forward with digitalization coming through in phase 3, phase 4. You're looking at a substantial chunk even coming on the subscription side of the business. So I think Z is something that I'd be liking. Valuations are a tad bit on the higher side, so I think I'd be taking weight for declines on the counter. But clearly, I think in this broadcasting space, I think Z is something that I'd be preparing. Great, Mayuresh. We leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, that's a quick uh, take on a couple of numbers that are out. We are counting down to Larson and Tubro. That's the other big one that's coming out with numbers. We'll get you more on that. But let's